Okay, so uh, you had me watch The Pervert's Guide to Ideology, which is a 2012 documentary. It's almost yes. like a lecture. It's almost we're gonna, a lecture. We're going to spoil the heck out of this long lecture by a um, Eastern <laughs> European man. Um, and, and this is our third movie that starts with a P. I'm just putting that out there. Right. Um, uh, Slovenian. He's Slovenian. Philosopher and psychoanalytical theorist Slav... Oh man, Slavaj Zizek, we will say. Yeah, it's. I'm sure that's not correct. Uh, we apologize. We're not. We're not necessarily. That that's a tough one. I'm not versed in Slovenian, um, so. Yeah, technically, this is a follow up to a movie called The Pervert's Guide to Cinema, which is from like six years prior, or at least. I wish it's... it were a Pervert's Guide to Film. Film. He says the <laughs> word film, film, and it's adorable. Yeah, it's. I mean, I might maybe that's the uh, Slo Slovakian word for it. I don't know. I, I couldn't. I don't know what actual language he speaks because he he talked about Yugoslavia because he's an older gentleman and he talked about former Yugoslavia a few times. So yeah, which apparently he when he grew up it was still Yugoslavia. Um, yeah. Anyways, so you had me watch this and I will do the synopsis for it. Uh, spoilers again, as you said, uh, <laughs> this is a movie that is just a man basically just talking about the philosophy, his different philosophies of how film informs ideology and like ideology is a complicated idea <laughs> is a complicated thing and basically an ideology is something where like you go about your life and you do things and you do them in a certain way and you don't even know that you're doing them in a certain way and that's an ideology like you just believe yeah. a thing is true and you don't question it right that's become an ideology and so he's talking about like different parts of films that you aren't really questioning or different ways films. He uses kinder eggs to the, the um, chocolate right. egg things to... To illustrate certain <laughs> mark like... To, no, to illustrate ideology. That's to like, illustrate ideology. The ideology is the, the chocolate around the, yeah. the, the core kind of a thing. Well, and it's like it's the perfect product because it's, you know, this and the inside is what you're really... In, right. Anyways, uh, this is a movie that I will have to watch again just gonna put that out there i definitely did and you've watched it several times now and you're still figuring things out i think this is the second time i've watched it all the way through got it it's he, he basically he i want to okay i have a small thing to say he starts by talking about they live spoilers for they live spoilers for anything we talk about right. they live is a john carpenter film starring uh rowdy rowdy piper uh and also keith uh keith davis, keith davis yeah um and a couple other people but it's about like basically all the hidden messaging that exists in the world and like eventually rowdy rowdy piper puts on these glasses and like a billboard that has like a pretty woman on it and like an ad for something he puts it on and it says like marry and procreate marry so and every... reproduce it turns out because i have been getting that wrong but it's fine it's close enough whatever marry and reproduce <laughs> Uh, uh, and, and it has uh, Obey, which is Obey where Shepard, Ferry, and those guys got the Obey stuff that, from. That's the most famous part of it is the Obey part. But he talks about that and how like it's this masterpiece and this like somehow Hollywood made it and like th that whole thing. And I I thought that 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 set the tone for me kind of because yeah. I started laughing at that point because They Live is a good movie. It's yeah. not a I don't think of it as a masterpiece. I would say mm -hmm. The Thing or something else might be like a better masterpiece from John Carpenter. They Live is a good movie. <laughs> I uh, love They Live. But yeah, it, as, as, a, as a film, it... Um... Yeah, it's it, it sort of, it sets, it sets the tone for me where I'm like, okay, this man is going to tell me things and I'm going to be very suspect of them <laughs> because he's definitely biased, missing... but, he's not, but he's not stupid or anything yeah. like that. And then he starts going into some really deep concepts and all the while, while he's doing this, he is, he's in, he, he's doing them as if you were on the sets of these movies. Right. He's on the set of They Live near a dumpster. He's yeah. in Taxi Driver laying down on the cot, which is probably yeah. the funniest one. I think in Titanic, he's in the water or something. Yes. Oh, he's on a, he's on a, he's on the, um, one of the lifeboats. He's on one of the lifeboats. So like, he, so it's, it's very clever and interesting and it's kind of a fun way to do it. Right. It's tongue in cheek. It's which makes yeah. it a little less dry. Yeah. So it ends up being kind of a fun documentary about really complicated stuff where I'm totally like amused that we're starting off with like they live as a masterpiece. Well, what you're missing Anyways. too is that he specifically references that they live has an endless scene between Keith Davis and Roddy Roddy Piper, 
where they right. are just punching each other in an alleyway and it goes on and on and on it like it is really long and his point for that is that Keith Davis doesn't want to put the glasses on and it's and to him this symbolizes how hard it is to to remove the ideology that you live with you know right. and that it's something you don't want to do and so on and that's right. why the scene is so long and that's what the scene means and and you yeah. said that it was one of the best explanations you'd heard for that I scene. had never that scene to me had always been too long and just very <laughs> silly and made yeah. no sense and it is the only explanation <laughs> I have ever heard not that I go searching for this but it is the explanation I've heard that makes the most sense yeah and so you know what points to you uh <laughs> Slavoj Zizek yeah. points to you. You've made they live make sense to me. Well, and so do you, is it? Do you want me to go? Do you have more? Go to ahead. Say? That was my. That I, was we my are whole... talking over each other some of this time. I don't. I don't want to say I don't agree with. I mean, you, you don't need to agree with what people say. Like he, he yeah. has a point of view. He's expressing. Yeah. Um, I like though that. I've been I've been watching all these Korean dramas and I've been specifically watching some of the more conservative ones and they all have a very strong marry and reproduce message right. and that's fine and I don't mind that it's just good to, it's good to question what you're seeing it's good to quite you hate question. it when it's in a movie but you're fine with it in these Korean dramas well because I'm getting something else from them it's more complicated than that and if I could say anything about him like occasionally he gets very simplistic about stuff um, but, I, you know, it, it's good to, to, you know, to understand. And a lot of what he has to talk about is um, kind of groups making yourself, you know, he, he references um, the riots in England at the time and, and stuff that seems very relevant right. now about, you know, the, these kind of, I think that's where his stuff is kind of important politically, where it's like, question what people are trying to sell you. Question if one group of people is being scapegoated, you know, if, if we're yeah. just, in his case, it's like the unwed mother is being blamed for everything. You know, we're, we talk a lot now about the systems of inequality that exist, you know, and, and that the yeah. problem isn't single black mothers, you know, or something right. like that. The problem is this, the, 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 the racist system that we have. And I, I can't, I have to imagine he approves of that because, yeah, you know, that kind of goes in with what he's saying. But as far as the mood, the, the film itself goes, I kind of enjoy it more when he is kind of critiquing the films more closely rather than using the film as an example for something. So when he talks about they live and talking about that, when he talks about Titanic, and how Titanic ultimately does what a lot we've seen happen in a lot of movies where poor people live and die so that a rich person can learn something. Yeah. Um, you know, we see a lot of minorities, we, we see a lot of wives die so that like this, this white male, this privileged white man, this wealthy, you know, can, can yeah. learn something like, so yeah. when he, you know, and, but to me, you know, personally like you can still like titanic even though it ha like well, yeah. we all get I mean, different things from art and it's movies are personal. problematic we like them i like gone with the wind i get it there are issues <laughs> but so. it's important when you look at a bigger story like the political world where you're actually trying to change things and i think the stories we tell are important and so on so i i like him for that reason i in my mind he's very tied together with los angeles plays itself because i think they both ultimately talk about getting past this kind of yeah getting past this layer of like um totally i totally see what you're going with this yeah you know um the it's LA about plays more itself, than just guy talks about the cynicism of, of la confidential i love la confidential but i know what he means when he talks about the cynicism wherein the only way for the world to survive for wherein well in la confidential it's that you know, there's this, this lie at the core, you know, whereas the reality is that the people can make a difference, right? And I forget what film they talk about in the Dark Knight. Film. Dark Knight, you're right. Where, you know, it, the good guys tell a lie in order to maintain order. And that's a very cynical way of looking at things rather than like the people, you know, and he's got atheistic, communistic background. And, and obviously that informs his 
point of view and what he's saying. But I find that, you know, interesting. And, and in LA Plays in itself, he talks about all the stories in Los Angeles that, that don't get told, you know, that they're, they're huge. I mean, Los Angeles is such a city of, of many different kinds of people. And yet the films tend to focus on like the wealthier white people. And, yeah. and so that kind of stuff. And I think, I think I like Los Angeles plays itself more than Pervert's Guide to Ideology if it comes down to it. But I do like the kind of encouragement to think past. It really both. That so that we can maybe tell some of these other stories because I love LA Confidential and we have LA Confidential. So why don't we do, and I think about that a lot in terms of rom-coms because I feel like we have seen 9 million writers in New York <laughs> as, and that's why I like the, the Korean dramas is because I, I think they, they, are, they are also limited, but they have more variety than you see in well, that's, that produced by the United States and well, you a and I make a specific England and stuff like that. You and I make a specific point of watching films like mm -hmm. that, like we try to check our privilege and check our like our bubble right. that we live in, right? We we're we're, right. we're Angelinos <laughs> on the West Coast, we're liberal, you know, Democrat haven. This, you know, we have a bubble right. we live in, but there's that doesn't mean we don't miss a lot of. I mean, that means that um, that almost means we miss more things sometimes because we're not paying attention. So we like we watch Daughters of the Dust, and I, you know, and I really like that right. movie. And there's movies, new movies out, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and um. The forty-year-old version that are, I think, both black cast. I think they're black. Some number of black creatives behind the scene as well. And like, we didn't watch those for this month, but I'm going to watch those at some point. And it's like we want to make sure, like, Los Angeles plays itself and the Perverse Guide to Ideology are both kind of like look past what the movie is doing, like right. look, past, look at what you're not seeing. Right. So as a part of that, like, you know, we've watched the Watermelon Woman, and it's like all of a lot of that is about like what you don't see on screen because it's about mm -hmm. trying to find the history. There has to have been, you know, lesbian stars. Right. There, some of the black women shown in screen were probably lesbians mm -hmm. or some sort of you know open sexuality towards more than just you know heteronormative. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I I like Los Angeles plays itself for that reason where it's like look past what you're seeing on screen. There's right. all these places in LA you're not seeing. And also all these stories you're not seeing partially because you're not seeing these places. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's connected. And right. I, the I, Pervert's Guide to Ideology is also about like, you know, in Titanic, you know, here's the poor people dying for the rich people. You know, here's, you know, Dark Knight is being cynical. Like, what does that right. mean? And, and honestly, when we talk about Dark Knight being cynical, I'm like, is that the like police justification thing where it's like you have to tell a lie and, and beat up your prisoners and and go after the black people, you know, as, as a, that's the lie you're telling yourself to make society safer. Like, mm -hmm. is, is that not contributing to that same sort of culture? I love the dark Knight. I don't, I think it's more complicated right. than that, but like, I, I do try to think about that. Like, is that not, you know, a part of the whole, like authority figures telling lies to try and keep things safe? Like, is that not contribute to the problems we have today with the system? Right. So I, I totally, I agree. I ultimately probably like Los Angeles Place itself more too. I need to rewatch that. But I do like how much, and I didn't fully understand everything in The Pervert's Guide to Ideology. Right, I agree. He he goes into um, atheism through Christianity and stuff like that. And it loses me a little having, in part yeah. and having not but been like, raised. I like how much he's, or anything. I like where he's like trying to ask you to look past it. And even specifically in his example of The Sound of Music. Yeah. <laughs> that was just that I had never thought about like the song that the the, the mother nun the, the head nun sings and like how it's basically like go have sex and have babies. <laughs> well, and and to sorry to to finish my point too. You so I enjoy more when he talks about they live and when he talks about Titanic and when he kind of talks about the ideology within the film versus like he talks about Jaws very briefly and how the shark kind of symbolizes everything and like stuff like that where he's kind of like using jaws to say something about society and i think he uses west side story to kind of do that too yeah he does where i didn't like those part quite as much and those were a little harder to follow for me but i mean it is the pervert's guide to ideology not the pervert's guide to cinema which i haven't watched so right you know it, it's it that is what it is but yeah i, I just think there's a lot of people out there who will pr present themselves as one thing um, as a way of, of gaining trust, of getting you to do things and so on. And I am a contrary, distrustful person. So 
I, I like this kind of, I like to look past stuff and, and it can be on a personal level and it can be on a world level. There's, there's a popular, I'm sorry, go ahead. And just to say people of, of all kinds of ideologies, both what we would consider left and right, will do this kind of thing. And it, I think it's important to, to be able to evaluate whether someone is performing word magic on you or not. Right. <laughs> And it's also, it's just something I enjoy. I like pulling films apart. And even, you know, j just because the, I can see that these Korean dramas I enjoy are a little bit nationalistic, a little bit yeah. encouraging women to marry and have babies doesn't mean I can't enjoy the film. Sometimes the, even the homophobic. The <laughs> but it also, I think, I think if you recognize these things, maybe it helps encourage something different in the future. So I don't know. That's kind yeah. of weird. No, I, I totally get that. And I, I pretty much the same way. And you, you, you're talking about, you know, left and right politics and stuff. Like there's, there's some, uh, as, a, as I don't want to get trashed by people in case somebody ever watches this, but like <laughs> there's somebody who's maybe more centrist who, who like, like sometimes I look at their stuff and I'm like, they certainly have their own ideology and way they do things and I'm like I don't think they realize that like that builds its own thing and like they probably really aren't like we're the best and worst judges of ourselves and so I don't right. think they really realize that they are probably more on a spectrum one way or the other but on top of that I don't think they realize that the way they do it like it presents this false equivalency between like different factions and right like, and I don't want to go over like who no, I agree with politically and what we no think, no but but I've just seen, like I have seen people with whom I actually agree politically present very stupid stuff yeah. because they have not looked past they have not thought about it and right. I, I i find that frustrating as well <laughs> like like it's almost this, i sometimes see like people on these on shows on just things about news and politics like calling the other person a name or saying like oh well look that you know that the whole thing with like i mean i get it the fly on giuliani's head or whatever was funny but like that almost becomes like that's the ideology is like making fun of someone as opposed to like whatever we're actually talking about underneath it. Like, I mean, the politics aside, like, it's just yeah. like, you're focusing on this, the memes or something, as opposed to like, I get it, whatever. Right. Like, well, that, like go, go beyond that. Go, go. People need it to doesn't be matter. Go past that. Critical in this day and age, if they're going to consume mass media. I mean, I all the time seen people like put up an image and say, this just shows and it's like yeah. that is literally one picture <laughs> like yeah. that shows a picture of an incidence of a thing occurring this is almost the problem to back up your ideology dare i say i know we've and gotten a... yeah no we, we have gotten a little we've gotten off track this, my... is, this is why a film like this is important but i don't know who's gonna watch it that doesn't already know <laughs> right no and i i don't know I, I, my last off track thought is this almost reminds me of first reformed mm -hmm. like this was kind of you and my problems with first reformed is like at a certain point that movie just feels like an ideology like yeah i feel like you need to watch that and then watch this to really understand <laughs> like why at a certain point like that movie didn't really work for me or for you yeah among yeah. other things but yeah. like you got to really look again i i what this guy's name is hard Slav Slavoj Zizek um, Slavoj, like, yeah. he really again I got lost at times but he does a good job of making the point for like Sound of Music and the guy who censored that one song because like if you right. really look at it and how it does for Christianity and you know all that and like I think that there's a really interesting thing in looking at that and looking past it and looking right. at like what we're really doing here and so I think mean, you want to be critical of media if you want to think about media. And, and when I say critical, again, it's not necessarily about saying this good, that bad, but just to right. think about it. I think this is a useful film. A lot of you should be as critical of this film as everything. So a, a lot of my favorite, like this and Lost, um, You Don't Know Me and uh, Los Angeles <laughs> Plays Itself, these are all like film essays that like I really enjoy that, that are also ultimately documentary movies that could also just be on YouTube. And there's a lot yeah. of stuff on YouTube where like, a lot of stuff on YouTube isn't even really about whether it's good or bad. Like usually they'll put that in there because their personality and, you know, their following yeah. wants that. But like, it's really about like, why did Francis Ford Coppola make these movies? And then he made yeah. these movies and like the through yeah. line is all about family. And like, why did these work and these didn't? And like, he was trying yeah. to do this really neat thing and it didn't work. And then he had to do all these other things. And maybe that's why a lot yeah. of his movies didn't work. You know, so it's like, it's more about like that than it is about like, are they good or bad? Yeah. So anyways. 
if you've listened to it to us this far, then this probably is the kind of movie you'd enjoy. Yes, if and you if, if you, you followed if you, along with if our, you're not listening anymore. Don't worry about it. Yeah, if, if you if you followed all our ramblings, <laughs> this might be the movie for you. 